Okay, good morning. We're in Hemshech Tzadik Dal, page 117. For those that want to follow the text and you don't have it, you just go to ionbase.com and you'll find the actual PDFs of these pages. So, so now we've entered going into a deeper discussion of this first level of Bittl, of Ur. So first summing up what we've learned, and that is that the Ayin Be'emtza, between the Yesh and the Yesh, which divides into two levels, uh, my Morim explained now both Ayin Be'ez, which is the base of this uh, Tzadik Dal, and page 1155 through 1157, and here from page 115 through 117 explained that the ayin is not, the das ayin and das tachin is not just the perspective of the creator and this perspective, perspective of the creation. It's also in the, in Elokus itself, keldeya, savaya, in havaya itself, you have two perspectives. So it's in Elokus, and he has explained havaya is oir, and the oir divides into two levels. So the Eir itself, not just how Atmos, the creator looks at Eir and sees Ayin, meaning that the Eir is completely bottle and uh, infinitely distant and insignificant compared to the source, but the Ayin itself feels that. And in that feeling and in that experience of Bittl, he said there's several levels, a Fanim Bittl. So we're learning the first level. What is the first level? That since the Eir is connected to and senses its source, it's margish is the words, it feels its source, which, which is what makes it oir. therefore it completely feels insignificant in the presence of its source. This is called a bitl of headed physis mokim. And in this last chapter 25 in uh, Sadiq Dal, he explained it at length with using keser is darkened before its source, all the lights are darkened before you, before him, for godliness, the chacham cotton, the flame in face of the sun, all the different aspects of this, which ends up being like this, that it's ur, it's a level called ur. We're not saying it's not ur, but when in the presence and in context of its source, it's not even, in the, it's not even the gather of ur, it's nothing that's not revealing anything because Atmos is, the source is completely overshadowing it. So it's like he said, lay together, that was I should say. That's briefly summing up what we learned. But now comes a question. Now comes a question. And you know, before I go to the question, so in simple terms, in the, putting it to in applied terms to our lives, it would be that you may be a great teacher, you may be a great scholar, you may be a great person. But when you're standing before your master, whether it's a, a human being or before God, you're bottle. You don't feel any significance because you're standing before something so much greater that compared to that level, this your level is considered insignificant. Or like he used the expression when he said mashpi and makabal, that the mashpi and makabal are not just two different quantitative levels. Ribui, kamus, ribui and mirt and kamus, quantitative, more and less. It's a different quality. The mashpia sees things from the nakuda, from the atzmi, and from there it extends outward. And the makabal, the recipient, sees things from outside, and from there it goes inward. So it's a very different state. So they're not just, they're not comparative. So one is bottled completely to the other. Good. So that's Heder Tfisa Smokin. Omnom, in this chapter 26, we began learning yesterday, a question how do you, can you apply that? You can apply that to giluyim, the concept of hedet fisus mokim, meaning something is not, doesn't have standing or is not significant or is overshadowed or is dark compared to the brightness of something greater than it, is all in giluyim. It's all in giluyim. So one thing stands nullified in front of another. But how can you apply that to atzmus, he says? Hulamailam ibchin is gilui. Atzmus is higher than the level of gilui. I'm reading from the middle of the page, 117. If that's the case, how can, how can you apply to this? How, how is it possible to say on this level, 
that the bitl is in a form of lack of standing or, or being nullified or feeling insignificant, no value, no value of self. Every bitl that comes from that sense, from, from that, that way, where you don't feel significant is because you're aware, you're, you have an awareness of that flaw, of the wonder, of the grandeur, of the greatness, of the awesomeness of the higher level. Like you said before, if you're not sensing it, then you're not going to feel bitl twisters muck. You won't even know that something so great is, is right near you. So it's all about sensing it. And that's only by gili air, because the mere fact that you sense it is already a gili. And atmos is beyond gili. So in simple terms, he's basically saying Atmos defies Gili or Helen. So what is Earth sensing in Atmos that, that causes it to feel had that this is smoking? Atmos is not a gather of Gili. If you sense Gili, you sense like sunlight. So the flame, a candle, compared to sunlight, yes, insignificant. There's, they're, they're both in the gather of Gili, and, and, that, and the Gili causes that type of bitle. That's apparently what he's saying here, that Atmos is not together of Gili, and therefore you can't say this, this type of bitl. I know I asked yesterday, why can't you say that the earth senses that itself, that Atmos is not together of Gili? Since it senses it, it realizes something is completely beyond. But I think that quest, that's a question that's really a circular question, because at the end of the day, if earth senses that, then it's not a matter of head that fits smoke him, then it's altogether a different reality. In other words, it's not like the candle would sense that the sun is beyond light. Why would the candle lose its significance because it's beyond light? It's because the sun is so bright. That's why the candle loses its significance. So the bitl of Hedrit Fitzes Mokim is by definition a relative one. It means in the presence of a greater teacher, a smaller teacher or a student is nullified. But in the presence of, let's say, a great tree, a big tree, is a student nullified? No, even if the tree is infinitely big, because they're not, it's not about, it's, 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 it's not the gather of, of that type of bitl, because they're not in the same league. It's not, it's gili, the gabi gili can be bottle in a way of insignificance, not gili compared to etzem. That's what Pashtus, on a, ostensibly what he's saying. A tree is a different thing. But so I, I, I think a different thing than earth. Exactly. No, Atmos is a source for the oil. No, what Atmos is not a source. Atmos is, can't even be called a mucker. No, okay. Atmos no, is beyond not a beetle. No, my question is, if you don't sense us, but you know it, but why probably... But, that's not about, but the point of the matter is, it's like saying a flame is nullified before a tree. No, a flame is nullified before a greater form of light that it senses, and therefore it's nullified before it. Because two different realities. You can't call head that fits the means that in the presence of something greater than you are, you are nullified. But that's a presence. It's a presence, like everything is explained. Keser, Lagabe Ilis Ailis, Lagabe the Kav, or whatever level he's spoken about, is all a gili compared to a higher gili. And the gili feels it, yes. That's a point. Feel set. There is a difference no, if you're not, not feel or you feel. But, but, but also that Atmos is not beget the gili. Forgot that line? He says, Atmos is not beget the gili. Right, but the oil knows that. My question is, why is okay, knowledge anyway, different? I, I just explained it as uh, why I understood it. And to me, that makes sense, the question, because it's both things. It's feeling it, but also feel. Because a flame doesn't feel a tree. And, and the oil does not feel Atmos. There's no hakoras ha flaw because it's completely different gather. All you can say is not me, it's beyond me. But in other words, the concept of head that fits the smoke means one thing senses that something is greater than it. They have to be in the same league, so there has to be some recognition, and there has to be, yes, there needs to be Akara, you need to recognize it, but it also has to be in the same league. Light is bottled to a higher light. This type of bit of head that fits the smoke, that's what he's saying. Anyway, that's the question. Okay. And we've already, as I said, this question is not from Sadiq Dalit, it's from Ayim Bayes. 
I'm just looking at the exact language there. Is there anything that he adds here? Yeah, Alamaylam begins Gili. Also, the concept of Hakodesh HaFloh, recognizing that itself is a gilu. For example, a stone, can you say a stone is bottled uh, to the sun? Can you say a stone is bottled to, um, like, Ur? He says his bottle to Gaba Atmos. Can you say a stone is bottled to Gaba Atmos? No. Because number one, the stone is not recognizing, and the stone is not the, it's not the gather of gilu. There's no gilu involved. You need to have gilu for it to have had the twist of smoking. That's very clear. Yeah. So I think the awareness of the source is not just the awareness. It also means it's revealed. So the flame is a revealed state of light, the candle. When it comes in the presence of a higher revealed state of light, it senses it, and therefore it's nullified. If the candle comes to a higher state of being, let's say uh, to Atsilus, it, it's not even in the same gather. So the candle is not nullified. The candle just doesn't... You can say the candle is meaningless in the face of something that is ruchnius. Let's say ruchnius nikolite, not, not sunlight. Yeah, but that's not called bitl of a head that fits the smokim. Then it's not in the gather of gili. Then it's just that gashmius compared to ruchnius is completely infinitely distant. Here you're talking about something that senses. He says, ba'atzmai, it feels that it's not significant. And that is not possible to be said seemingly, ba'atzmus. You can say you feel insignificant, Lagabe, something in your own league that you're aware of, and it's beyond you, in the world of Giluim. That's clearly what he's saying. The explanation I think I just gave, I think, is adequate. Okay. So now comes the answer. And the answer is going to explain a new, well, not really new, we learned this already, but it's going to explain uh, and elaborate, I should say, on a dimension of Eir, Something about Eir that's unique. That the way God imparted Eir is different than the way he imparted other things. And the result of that, Eir does have some type of sense of Atmos. That's essentially what he's going to be saying. So it's not going to make Eir closer to Atmos, because Atmos from Atmos' point of view is infinitely distant from Eir as he is from everything. As we've learned and we will learn inside here more elaborately. But from the point of view of Eir, the way Eir emerges is in the form of a gilui. It reveals something. And as a result, we're going to learn that that gilui is not bederech richuk. It's not distant from Asmus because it reveals. And therefore, you can say, therefore, that there's a sense of tzedet fisa smokim because that element of Eir being somewhat of a revelation of its source allows you to be able to say that it has an element of being insignificant compared to that source because of its gili, because of its mile. Something that's a yesh that doesn't reveal anything, you can't call it headed physical smokim. This physical world, as much as we contemplate, yes, we can say we are insignificant compared to higher levels, but compared to atmos, what sense of insignificance do we have? We have nothing in common. So therefore, there's nothing that we're revealing. You could say, when, for example, something is a big mila, something has a quality, that Asmus gave it some quality, so that quality, because it senses its source, it's going to have some element of insignificance. But don't ask me questions on this right now. I'm just giving a summary of what he's going to say. We're going to learn it inside, and we'll try to uh, discuss, understand as best as possible. Now, for the record, we learned it all inside already, but this is with the Friedrich Kadeba's elaboration. So middle of, uh, two-thirds of the way, the line begins, Yudhiya Safla, page 117, Sadiq Dalit. So he says the following, After asking the question, that which is where you say something is, feels insignificant. So he says, However, here is how we can, we can explain 
this question that he just asked. So he's now going to answer it. The answer is going to go a few pages. Nine Bays, it went for a page or two, two pages here. It'll go for um, almost four pages. So he's going to say like this. Dehine, because now, but even ham tzos mitzias ha'er min ha'atzmos, in the manner in which oir, I don't want to say emerges, but ham tzos means it is derived from, it comes from. The way it emerges from atzmos, the mitzias of er from atzmos, hari yesh dover the inyan asha mitzad zeh hini habitl shal eru be'efen habitl dehedet fisas mokim. So this is the Friedrich Rebbe is giving an introduction to the answer that doesn't say in Ayin Beis. These few lines is the Friedrich Rebbe's words. That something about how air emerges from Atmos, there's yesh dover ve'inyan. There's, there's something and ve'inyan and a, something and, and a conceptually as well that due to that, the bitl of the air is in the form of a bitl of lack of standing or lack of significance or lack of value, self-value. So there's something unique about Ur that's going to be explained now that will help us understand why you can call it as an insignificant state compared to Atmos. Vuhu, and what is that? Vuhu zem the close beginners of Ermen Atmos. This unique element, clearly he says unique, he says dovar ve'inyan. It's interesting two words. Dover means a thing, something. And inyan means a, uh, a property or a uh, feature. Let's just try to find English words for this. Because he does say two words here. But basically there's a property, a feature, a quality of er that is going to allow something unique. So what is this unique thing about er? That's what we need to understand. Well, who's there? And that is this. Master, the clothes beginners are ermina asmus. The general level of air coming from asmus. Had a yesh, I'm sorry, was I'm the ain't the beginners is ichuk mina asmus. That's the description. It's not in a state of distance from asmus. Now, of course, you right away jump and say, What does that mean? There's something closer to asmus than others. Isn't asmus removed from it all? So keep in mind, we're not talking from the point of view of Atmos. We're talking about from the point of view of Eir, that Eir, the way God manifests Eir, is that Eir should not be distant. God wants it to be reflective of himself to some extent. Because the Indian of Eir is Gili, if you remember. We spoke about awareness, consciousness, that something is present. And God wants it to be revelatory. He doesn't want it to be a concealer. When God created Eir, he did not create simsum. Simsum is a different force. There's yecholte lahoyer, yecholte shaloy lahoyer. So just to use an example, and we're going to elaborate more. When a teacher is going to teach a student, so there's two things at work. One is that he's going to reveal ideas. Yes, they're going to be limited. They're going to be catered and customized and tailored to the student. But it's a gilly. The student is going to hear something. Whether it's olive bays or the deepest, uh, uh, the deepest explanation of a Gemara or Chsidis, it's a gili. And then there's a second side, the loy lahoyer, how much the, the teacher is concealing, the contraction, the concealment, the diminishment, the mishalim, making it accessible. So you can't say that his power to reveal is bederech richuk, because its whole union is to reveal. You could say it's limited. You could say compared to what the teacher knows, it's infinitely distant. You could even say that his ability to reveal and his ability to conceal are equal compared to the etzim of the teacher. No problem. But bottom line is when he's revealing, a revealing is revealing and concealing is concealing. Both are necessary. So when you say you're not saying you're not saying, okay, now God is going to manifest through concealment. He wants something to be revealed. So that revelation itself, he says, is It's not considered to be distant mina atmos. It's interesting. He doesn't say bchinas kiruf. He just keeps saying not the negative. It's not distant. He hasn't said anywhere that it's cut of la He just says ain't bchinas Just pointing that out. Okay. Now again, I'm just 
helping explain it, but he's going to elaborate on this. What does it mean? What does it mean? It has to be a system for the revelation. No? Look, look, look. You, if you may recall, you've asked this question at least 10 times when we learned I am Bayes in here. We're going to learn it inside. I'm going to try to explain it the best way I can. And we'll see then if, 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 if it's understood. I'm not going to explain now the next four pages. I'm just beginning the discussion. It's not over yet. You're just beginning. He just said the words. I just explained what it meant. In my opinion, it's an explanation that, the, that revealing is not concealing. Revealing is not richuk because it's a revealing of what the teacher wants to reveal. So that itself means it's not richuk. The mere fact that he wants to reveal something in his mind, forget about how big it is and how infinitely distant it is. But at the end of the day, whatever he reveals is revealing something that's true. Bottom line is Aleph is a true statement that reveals something from the teacher. So it's not Rikhuk. That's not Rikhuk. That's Kiruv. You know, let me correct. It doesn't say Kiruv. It's not Rikhuk. That's what he says. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we are. And even though and even though we cannot identify atmos as being a source of light, when you say light, sunlight comes from the sun, obviously it's not because the sun is a body of light. It's a source of light. It was created to illuminate the earth. So it's true, the light is infinitely distant from the sun in the sense that the sun is a source of light and the light is only a reflection of that source. But there you can say it's not here, but Atmos, you can't call a sun, God forbid. Atmos is not a mokir le'er. Like he says, ain't b'chinus mokir le'er. So then, what, how could you say it's b'dai b'dai rechrichuk? Raksha er nimtsim in Atmos. So even though air comes from Atmos, but you can't call Atmos a source. Because it's beyond being a source of light. It's only that Ur nimts him in Atmos. In other words, Ur comes from Atmos, but Atmos can't be defined as a source for light. Because that would make Atmos defined somewhat by it being a source of light. And we learned earlier that Leza Iker Elakus, Shenisava Memena Ur, or Shenimtsim Memena Ur. This is not the primary thing of Elakus. The, the Iker of the sun is to give off light. But the atmos, you can't say that's the ikr. So therefore, atmos can be called a mokr. That doesn't mean it isn't a source. It's just not defined as a source. Ur obviously comes from it, but you can't define it as a source of something. Keep that in mind. He doesn't say that atmos doesn't come from atmos. He says it's not a source. You can't define atmos as a source of light. So that, in a sense, that in a sense basically brings us back that atmos and air are distant from one another. And yet we said it's Leib B'chinus Rechuk. So this is a Im Hayes. He's qualifying and asking, essentially, this question. Isn't Atmos not a source? Since Atmos is not a source, it's not B'derech, so it's B'derech Rechuk. You could only say, Er Nimtzim in Atmos. The question is not over. He's still continuing. And V'ha'ore, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I skipped the line. V'ha'ore, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I skipped the line. And Eir is infinitely distant compared to Atmos. Being that it's a reflection, that's not at all an etzem. It's not at all a core essence. It's only a reflection. It'd be like saying a shadow that we, sh- we cast a shadow. You're walking in the street, at, let's say at night, and there's a light shining behind you and a shadow is cast. What is the shadow compared to you? It's completely, uh, in, 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 infinitely distant. It's almost like a byproduct that doesn't have any significance. In arech. For ora hu be in arech legabe etzem. A reflection is always infinitely distant compared to an etzem. Because an etzem is a core entity. A reflection is only a reflection. It's like the reflection of your face in the mirror. Yes, there's a reflection there. But what is its... Uh, relationship with you. Can you say the reflection in mirror has anything close to the original? No. It's just, a, it's just an image. It's just a reflection. 
So all this is coming to tell us that it's ein arech. So how could you say it's not bederech lichuk? So he's soon going to answer this. He's going to answer that it's not, we're not talking about the etzim level of air, we're talking about the way air emerges. That's going to be the key. The way air emerges, not air itself. But let's continue. Because a ha'ara is not a mohuz dover, like a reflection in a mirror or the shadow I mentioned. Any reflection is not a mohuz dover. There's no real substance there. So yes, little children may see themselves reflected in the mirror. They think they have a friend. But that's because they don't know yet. But it's not, there's nothing there. There's no substance. It's not a mohuz dover. Ki'im his pastus. Spastus means only an extension of something. It's only an expression. It's only a reflection, like he's saying here. Vaha'atzmi hu mohuz dover. And atzmi is actually a, a, something of substance. Obviously, he's talking here atzmi in general. Atzmus, we can't call mohuz dover either. But he means in context of oyer, when you say the reflection of something and, it's, and the thing it's reflecting are this infinite distant state, ha'ara and etzim. And now he goes back to Atzmus. And what we're saying now, this is every Ha'ara and Etzem. Every glow compared to the thing itself that's causing the glow to happen. And this is specifically when you're talking about Atzmus. That's completely removed from Ur. Because with the sun and the sunlight, you could also say etzim and aura, and there's an infinite distance. Because the sunlight can, can be compared to the sun itself, but there you can't say the sun is completely removed. You could just say their states are very different, infinitely different. But the sun, at the end of the day, is a source of light. Atzmus is not is moved to legamri mina er. to the extent, to the point that compared to atzmus. So he's going even further now. That compared to Atmos, from the perspective of Atmos, even though the air is a revealing force, it's not a gili of Atmos. Why? Because Atmos is beyond air. Because Atmos mamish. What Atmos is in its essential state does not carry over into Ur. This is a line from Ayin Beis. It says it now in Yiddish to drive the point home. What Atmos is, vetnit arab in Ur. What Atmos is does not get carried over or carried down into light. Vim Kane. That's the case. So A, therefore, is infinitely distant in, in context or from the perspective of Atmos in comparison to Atmos. Completely in And it continues. It's not over yet. He's still developing this, uh, this point of the distance of Ur from Atmos. So he says, Ukanal. Like we learned earlier, so in the bottom he says, the Rebbe says, look at chapter 14, and the beginning and the end of last mimer. That's where we learned this. What did we learn? That the true, that the, the, the Shezehu, interesting how he spells Shezehu. Usually it's with, either it's two words or it's here, it puts it into one word. That in Elam Haza, it nothing compares, it does, does in is infinitely distant. What is the diuk? That Dafke in Elam Haza, we sense the Eina Reich of Atmos. Shemisavis Hayesh, from the creation of the Yesh, which is in Elam Haza. We become aware of the idea of Enarech. I said Anu Yedim. What did I say? Anu? 
Anu Yedin. We know. You said ain't Anu Yedin. Shemisava say yes, Anu Yedin. From the creation of the yes, we know the Indian of Einarech, the infinite distance of Atmos from us. By Deze. By De. So what did he say there? Let me see. Does he say it here? Yeah. The reason he said that is because in order to be able to create something like Oyer, you could say Oyer does not tell you that the source is infinitely distant from Oyer. If we only saw, let's say, for argument's sake, there was no Yesh, there was no Elam Hazer, we'd have whole Shader Shtalshlus, but only levels that reveal godliness. Ak reveals on a highest level, Akudim, Nikudim, Atzilas, Bria. Let's, for argument's sake, there's only revelation. And you lived in Atzilas. You lived in Atzilas. And Atzilas 24 7 is complete awareness of godliness. Markovit, the Ovis, Heinein and Markovit, that's Atzilas. Complete Chesed knows all the time, all it is, is a divine attribute. What would Chesed and Gvura and Atzilas tell us about God? You'd know that God has attributes. That's one thing. You'd know that God is higher than Chesed and Gvura. But you wouldn't know that it's Einarech. How would you know? Because you have a, a, something that reveals. Now, that doesn't mean Atmos is not Einarech. You just wouldn't know it. Because there's nothing in existence in Atzilus that tells you God is completely beyond it all. But then suddenly you see a world like ours creation of a yesh. We come in this world and there's no awareness at all. On our own, there's no awareness of godliness. Yes, you can contemplate, you can extrapolate, you can use your mind and say nothing creates itself. And that's talk of the process, how we slowly come. How Avramovinu, in this week's Parsha, how Avramovinu came to discover God. But on its own, what in this world testifies to godliness? Nothing reveals the divine. It just, intelligence tells you that it didn't create itself. But there's no revelation. So therefore, when you come to realize that this was created, you realize the creator is beyond Gili. He's b'sholei be'erech to anything. Because to create a yesh, in the words of Ageres HaKedosh, to create a yesh ma'ayin ve'efes ha'muchlet, which means a yesh that does not have any Indicative, it doesn't indicate to any source. That's why it's called Ma'ayim Ve'efes Amuchlet. It didn't like, it's not like the Yesh, like the stone or a tree or a human being exists in some type of lesser physical form in Yitzira or in Bria or Natsilis. Yes, you have the root of the spirituality of our lives, but the physicality is like poof, it came from where? It doesn't have any type of traceable source. So where did, so that so he says Nagar Sakadesh, who who can create something like that? To create Atsilus, all you need is something that's a very high gilui. So it manifests and emanates in the world of Atsilus, but to create a um, a yesh that does not have any, does not indicate and trace to any source, who levade, who levade bekechivichalti, only Atmos, who he himself he himself has no mitsiusim atzmuse. He himself is a fundamental core essential entity. He's the only one that can create something that should have that type of lack of trace, traceable source, origin. So therefore, only the yesh reveals to us on uyedim the inarech that God is beyond it all, because who else can create such a yesh? Oyer itself would not tell us that. But once we know the yes, now we know that Elam Haza tells us there's Enarech, so then he continues. Now we know, if God can create something that, has, that is not in any way connects, in any conscious aware way, traces itself or connects to the source, then we know that even Atzilus and Oyer also is not really reflective of Atzimus which we wouldn't have known had we not seen the yesh. 
So ein arich legabe atzmus. Page one eighteen. In comparison, from the point of view of atzmus, the ma'el levad. He's going to say now what I just said. Balpe. The ma'el levad loy hoyinu yedim ha'inyan de ein arich. From light itself, we would not have known the Indian, this Indian of infinite distance. The air ain't a machriach in the narech. Air does not machriach, air does not machriach in narech. When you see light, it doesn't immediately tell you that the source of this light or wherever this light is coming from is infinitely distant to light beyond light. On the contrary, if you look at light, it tells you that there is a source that gives off light. You wouldn't know where the source is completely infinitely distant. Because when you see air, it's possible also a scenario, like it is with sunlight, that the, that is be'erich mekede. It's taka etzem and ispashtus, it's etzem and ha'ar, it's only a reflection. But still, there's something in common. The sun is a source of light. So you, it's air itself, without knowing more, not knowing any more information, it's possible that you would come to a... That, that, it, in air, there is, there is the, not just possible, there is elements of air that, that indicate on a source that's be'erech, that does have a relationship that is not infinitely distant, that there is some type of relationship between them. Like it is in Giluim. In the world of Giluim, not the Kabe Atmos, the world of Giluim, air indeed is be'erech. Atzilus is be'erech to the levels before Atzilus. Ak is be'erech the level before Ak. The Kav, everything has some type of relationship with a level before it in Giluim. So from this we know that Eir itself, all it can tell you, Atzilus can tell you I come from Ak. Ak can tell you I come from the Kav. The Kav can tell you I come from Eir and Sof Lifniat Simpson. Every level of Eir will tell you that it has a source. The source is greater than I am. But it's still a source that I can relate to. There's a relationship because they're both in Giluim. Remember, headed fist of smoke, and we learned in the question, means there's some type of connection. That's why it's feeling insignificant because it senses a source. It's not completely beyond. So it alone, without any additional data or information, is not machrir, does not compel the concept of enarech. It tells you there's something higher. It does not tell you there's something of inarech. Okay. But rak hayesh. It is only due to the mitziyas hayesh. Not oir. Remember, oir is always reflective of a source. Oir yesh is not reflective of a source. Only from mitziyas yesh anu yedim. We know. Ha'inyan de inarech. This idea of infinite distance. So basically, there's an expression, Avne de Mizgeshizba. If you want to know how powerful a person is, you have to look at the stone that he lifts up. You know, let's say a strong man. How do you know how strong somebody is? Based on what they accomplish. If you see someone lifting 100 pounds, okay, you know that's their strength. You see someone lifting 1,000 pounds. If you see someone lifting something that is completely a different league, it indicates. So the, from the creation, you tells you about the one that created it. If you create something that looks like you, then all you know is, I know how to create something that's in my image, that has some my attributes. Yes, it's lower than me. It's a reflection. All the, it, it, But it's still something that is a reflection. If you create something that's completely not like you, that means it doesn't have anything that indicates that you are in it. That tells you, oh, wow, this is an amazing feat. This is why we see when we see somebody do something, for example, an artist creates art. Then suddenly you see the artist can sit down and, uh, I don't know, compose music. You realize, one second, this person is not just an artist. This person is also a musician. Then you see them go do some other feat that you wouldn't attribute to them. Tells you that their etzem is far more than just identified by what they did because you see them doing things that are not their usual accomplishment. This is one of the reasons when we talk about parents giving birth to a child, the miracle of birth. So you wonder, when you give birth to a child, you say to yourself, one second, what do I have in me that has the power to create? We don't create anything in life. 
the businesses we build, the things we craft, they're all yesh mi yesh. You take one object and you turn it into something bigger. You reshape it. Even if you build a new business, you're still using resources, ideas, concepts of this world. Suddenly, we have the power. Yes, it's true. It's the seed of a man, of the, fa- of the husband, it fertilizes the, 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 the egg of a, of a woman, of the wife, in a sanctified way. Something happens. It, uh, that it suddenly becomes, it conceives. And a cell begins to split, split into another cell. And nine months later, you have a birth of a child. Anyone thinking with regular seichel says, where did this come from? How do we have such a power? So you have to say that means that we're given a power that's greater than who we are. Nothing in this world can create. So that's why it says, this is an example of yesh ma'ayin. It's not mamish yesh ma'ayin because there is something, there's a seed, there's an egg, but still relatively speaking. So as soon as you see something accomplished that's beyond the this, this seemingly normal nature of the thing it's coming from, it tells you that that thing is completely on a different level. So Oyer can only tell you that the source gives off light. It can't tell you whether the source is Einarech or not Einarech. It may be, it may not be, like we just discussed. But Yesh doesn't have that type of, it doesn't reveal Yesh. So Yesh tells you that the creator of the Yesh is something that's beyond Yesh and not Yesh. Yesh and Ayin. Something beyond Oyer and Helam. And that's what the Yesh of Elam Haza, Einarech Lecha Elam Haza, teaching us that infinite distance. Once we know that, then you realize the oil that comes from Atmos is also Einarech. Because once you know the Einarech of Atmos, then that's that. That now is now we understand a whole different dimension. So that's what he says. In order for there to be the existence of Yesh, it's not just a higher level of Oyer or a more Oyer, a source of light. It can only be from Atzmus Dafka. He doesn't say here why, but we learned it earlier from the Agera Sakedish that I quoted before. So this tells us, so the Yesh, the union of a yesh, the mere, the mere existence or, or concept of a yesh, machriach, it compels the idea of enarech, that atzmus is beyond, infinitely beyond existence. And through this awareness or knowledge or perception of the enarech of the yesh, from this we know, from this we derive, or we, we know, that also the air comes from Atmos, and it's Einarech, and it's infinitely distant altogether, from the perspective of Atmos. But so, so we still have to now still establish the other half. This is all a big imayes. If you remember, he said in the beginning of the whole theme, point here in the answer, that that er, however, the way er emerges from Atmos is not b'derech lichuk. That's why this whole arich is, because he's saying, I'm just want to make sure we remember the flow. There's a question here. Now, this is not an answer. It's a question. He says, uh, uh, what did he say? The words were, so all this is an extension still from there. Now he's going to go back and say, and yet, despite what we just said, that Eir is Einarech compared to Atzmus, as the Yesh is, yet there's still something, remember, a unique feature and quality in Eir that causes that it's not B'derech Lichuk. We still need to explain that, but that's where he's, what, he's building to, what he's building toward. So he says, Harashim, Yesh Machlir, Okay, good. The Ima Yes. Now we're continuing on. The Ima Yes, the Kemoisha Yeshu be Enarech, the Gabe Atmos. And now, even though 
that just like the yesh is infinitely distant in context, in, in, from the perspective of Atmos, so too is er be'enarech, like we just learned. We know this after, we know there's a yesh, we know now that er is infinitely distant from Atmos, just like yesh is. Nevertheless, so the existence of Eir, the mere existence, if you put Eir and Yesh side by side, they're both infinitely distant from Atmos. But there's a distinction between them in the Eifen. The, the, the key word here is Eifen. In the manner in which they emerge from Atmos. The way Eir emerges from Asmus is different. It's not in an infinitely distant way like Yesh. So this seems like a complete paradox. You just said that they're both infinitely distant. Now you're saying the way it comes from Asmus is not infinitely distant like the Yesh. So obviously he's going to explain this. So bear in mind, that's exactly, but that's what he wants to lead to. There's something about Er that's, that's like Yesh in its infinite distance, but there's something about Er that's not like the Yesh. It's not Einarech like the Yesh. What does that mean? So he's going to say, Ukanal, like we learned earlier, and the Rebbe Tzeichen is here to chapter 14, I believe, yeah. Ukanal, like we learned earlier, the Masha Atzmus Nikre Beira, the fact that Atmos is called the creator, who damitis inyan habriya v'yisava sumina Atmos. When we say God is a beta, like we learned, it doesn't mean he's the source. Again, like with Oyed, he's not the source. It means the true inyan of briya v'yisava sumina Atmos. Hinezehu bederech enarech. Let me read it again. The Masha Atmos Nikle Beda, who damitis in a brief is Azumina Atmos, in his zero bederech in In other words, when we say God is called the creator, which means that the true power of creation is only in the hands of God of Atmos, this is in the form of Enarech. Like we learned, the Yesh is en- created in a way that's Enarech. That's exactly why it's a Yesh. That's exactly why it reveals the Enarech of Atmos, because it's created in a way that's infinitely distant. There's nothing in common between the Yesh and Atmos. The creation is in a form of Enarech. In other words, not only is the Yesh actually infinitely distant from Atmos, its manner of creation is in a way that it's infinitely different, and it, should, and it sees itself that way. That's exactly why the yesh reveals Ein Arech, because the yesh doesn't have anything in common with Atzmus. Levad Masha Yesh Atzmehu Ein Arech, this is what he says now. It, but yeah, besides the fact that the yesh itself is infinitely distant, I'm sorry, I didn't read the Nigan right. That the Hainu Sheisavus, but then its manner of creation is in a way of, of infinite distance, besides the fact that it itself is infinitely distant. So here's now two things that he just stated. One is that a thing could be infinitely distant, but it doesn't necessarily mean it was created in that way. Oyer, we're going to learn now, is also infinitely distant from Atmos. But the way it was created was to be a revealer, not a concealer. Yesh is created in a way that doesn't indicate in any way its source. That's exactly why it reveals Atmos as Enarech. Oyer, on the other hand, it itself, the entity of Eir, may have a source because it's a revealer. We don't know. So that alone tells you that even though Eir is Enarech because the Yesh reveals that aspect, but Eir itself, its properties, is a revealing part. That's what he's going to say. The way Eir comes from Atmos, even though Eir is Enarech, in fact, in reality, but its manner of emergence from Atmos, it doesn't come like an Einarech. That's why Eir itself can't tell you about Einarech. So here's the interesting twist. The Maila, the Chesarn of Eir is also its Maila. 
its chsodan is that it doesn't reveal to us how, how, how deep and how infinitely distant Atmos is. Because air c- cannot do that. Who reveals that? Or how do we know that? I should say not reveal. How do we know that from the yesh? But because air does not tell us that, that tells you that air is, tells you about its source. Its mila is that it always tells you, I have a God. Yesh does not say, I have a God. This is an agnostic universe. The yesh on its own can claim, I don't, I don't have a God, I don't need a God, etc. We see it all day, every day. Oyer, on the other hand, is a revealer. So even though the truth is that Oyer is also in Arech, how do we know that from the yesh? But Oyer itself, its own property, is not in the form of Ein Arech because it wasn't created in the Ein Arech way, or else it would have been a yesh. It was created in a way that reveals. Yes, what it reveals is not Atmos, but it's still a revealer. Whatever it reveals, it reveals. So he says like this. Okay. This means the Oyer who ain't a rech klal legaba atzmus. Oyer itself, its actual existence is ain't a rech klal. It's come. It's infinitely distant altogether from atzmus. Avli savuse ain't a bederach ain't a rech. But its manner of creation, the way it's created, the way it exists, is not in the form of ain't a rech. It's not one that is completely apart. At the end of the day, it reveals. Even though you can't call that Kiruv, because as we said, Er and Atzmus are infinitely distant. You can't call Kiruv Atzmus, that Atzmus is close to Er. Nevertheless, you also can't say it's in a form of infinite distance. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is where he's going to go now to the example of Rotzen and Seichel. How Rotzen manifests the nefesh, and Seichel is only one particular faculty of the nefesh. We learned, of course, all this in Ayin Beis, but he's going to elaborate more. Now, the truth is, every almost every line we learn now is word for word from Ayin Beis. So, I would reserve continued discussion explaining this until we learn the whole example of Rotzen and Seichel, which is what he's going to do now. Um, but I will say one thing. The, 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 uh, the immediate question, obviously, is this. You just said at the bottom of last page that these strong words, not only is Atmos infinitely distant from Meir, he says, Vos Atmos is vetnit arob Okay, so clearly what Atmos is does not carry an Er. So why is Er in any way closer? Let's not use the word closer. Why is it less distant, less en Arech than Yesh? Now the obvious answer is, because we're not talking here about Atmos. It's not about Atmos. Of course, from the point of view of Atmos, Oyer and Yesh are both infinitely distant because Oyer is not clo- is not in any way closer to Atmos than Cheshech, for that matter, than darkness. Gilu and Helam are equal. And beyond both of those as well, Atmos is beyond that too. However, at, but from the other side of the coin, what is Oyer? Who put Oyer there in the first place? It's Abish to put Oyer. And he didn't put Eir as a helm. He said, I will reveal something for myself. Or else Eir wouldn't be called Eir. You can't call Eir a gilui if it's not being megala anything. What full complete atzmus is not being megala? It's not megala, the einarech of atzmus. But to say that it's the opposite of gilui, you can't say that either. Because Eir, by definition, is revealing. Even if it's os aleph, it's one letter aleph, compared to the whole... Br- Infinite, it's still an, a letter Aleph, it's still a Gili. That's what I want to say up till now. I have to conclude a little earlier now because I have a, I must run somewhere right now. So I just wanted to conclude with that. If there are any questions, I'll take them tomorrow because I have a very, dead, uh, very hard deadline right now. So let's stop here. We're, the, we're in the middle of page 118. We'll continue tomorrow.
please save all your questions for tomorrow. I'm sorry about that. And um, everyone have a great day. Thank you.